Jay Baruchel is unapologetically Canadian. So while he has appeared in big American films such as Clint Eastwood's Million Dollar Baby and the comedy Knocked Up with Seth Rogen, he has proudly chosen to create his own work here in Canada. You may remember his popular and decidedly Canadian feature film Goon. Now its sequel, Goon, Last of the Enforcers, is at theaters across the province. And Jay Baruchel joins us now on Why Canadian Films Matter. It's great to meet you. Uh, thank you for having me. I don't me. know why we haven't met up until now, because I love your films and I love hockey. And Well, listen, it's never too late. Good. Uh, this is your... Like, this is your directorial debut, isn't it, it is, with this film? It is indeed, yeah. uh, Why'd you want to do that? Oh, boy. Uh, it's it's something I've wanted to do uh, since I was a little kid. You know, I, my, my first day on set as an actor was when I was 12. Um, at 9 is when I said I wanted to be a director. So even when I started at 12, Mom said to me, you know, you want to go to film school and be a director, being on set is the best possible film school in the world. Um, so I've been waiting to do this since I was a kid. Uh, but why this film specifically is uh, purely because uh, Michael Dow's uh, friend and mentor who directed the first Goon, uh, circumstances dictated that he couldn't return uh, for number two. And, um, and then it was uh, our lead, uh, Sean William Scott, and another one of our leads, Marc-Andre Grande, who each sort of asked me if I'd think about doing it. and. Honestly, you hadn't thought about it before Well, of course that? I had. Yes. Of yeah. course I had, but I I, uh, I would never share that. So it's, uh, I, I, um, uh, I believe in the chain of command, and, and, and Douse is also, it was his movie. And so we, Jesse, my writing partner, and I, we built the second script for him to direct. That being said, um, a, as I'm invested in it and I care a great deal for this story and these characters, yeah, I'd be lying if I said I hadn't visualized every second of it in my head while we were writing <laughs> and it. And how'd you find the experience of actually doing it? The greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Really? Yeah. I mean, not everything comes at a price, right? Like, I, I, I have a prescription for heartburn medication that I didn't <laughs> used to need. Uh, but, 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 um, but no, it's, it's the greatest art form the world's come up with, in my opinion. And What's uh, the best part of directing that's so gratifying? Wow, that's a very good question. Um, I, I, I think it's, uh, it's going to sound really hokey uh, uh, moments when, when, when everything hits a sweet spot, when, when the camera does what um, you hope it will and your actors are firing on all cylinders and you are watching live uh, a classic moment that you grew up watching uh, in movies, you know, since your dad rented them for you when you were little. And so to watch movie moments come to life in, re you know, in real time is pretty special. There's nothing hokey about that. Okay, that's cool. absolutely, that's a perfect answer. Cool, thanks. And how, how often do you think over the course of doing the directing for this picture, did you get that feeling? Oh, uh, countless times throughout the day. You know, um, it's, it's weird. It's, it's, be, because you have so much stuff to worry about, you're watching the clock, you know, you've only got X amount of uh, minutes each day to do what you've got to do. You've got a lot to do each day. There's a crew of 100 people, a lot of cast. And so there's, so I, I constantly, there's a voice in the back of my head that like really didn't want me to ever succumb to the stress because I've been waiting to do this my whole life. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, you know, mom said to me when I was little, uh, you don't have to hate your job. You should, uh, just because you see grown-ups unhappy doesn't mean you have to be one. She said, find something you would do for free and find a way to get paid to do it. And there I was in the trenches on my movie, and so it was never once lost on me. Awesome. I presume it was an option for you to make this movie in the United States. Mm -hmm. You didn't make the movie in the United States. Yeah. How come? Well, you know, we, we are, so this is like a... U.S. Canadian co-production, um, but we could not have made this particular movie uh, in in in, a, in in L.A. in the studio system. Um, there are blessings and curses that come with each. So while the uh, big studios have a lot more resources to play with and, and money and yeah and and a much bigger sort of soapbox and you can you can reach people in China and all that stuff which is wonderful but they're beholden to other masters because they're big bloated corporate endeavors right so even if it's a movie it's still a 300 million dollar investment mm -hmm. and people watch their money 
and and so you end up having to uh, aspire to appeal to as broad an audience as possible. And when you try to make something universal, you end up making something for no one, I think. Mm -hmm. I think that here, we we sort of it's about picking your punches, right? Like, I, I think we've we've In, used interesting a, uh, metaphor. Well, yes, what the movie's yeah, about. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, we've used a, a false metric in this country. We've always sort of said, well, we can't compete with them, so why bother? And well, th that's assuming we can't compete in their fight, right? But what's the fight we should be competing in? Okay, so every Saturday across this country, there's bar fights happening. There's little men taking down big guys all the time. And that's the and that's because they fight their fight, and so we can't uh, crash spaceships into the Hollywood sign like they can, uh, but they can't be as harsh and have as much teeth and come at it with the chutzpah and balls and the handmade clumsy uh, sort of blue collar language. Like there's there's all these sort of things that we can do that they can't because we don't answer to all those masters, right? So rather than trying to beat them at their own game, play our game and win that fight. And this is a movie that has so much uh, soul and and I call it a handmade movie. It's handmade in that you, you you feel the presence of people in it. You know, it's not a cookie cutter thing made just to sort of uh, fulfill some obligation. Uh, th th this is a love letter, a bunch of people's love letters, and you don't really get to make a lot of those in the states when you have to answer to God knows how many investors. Hmm. Can I see your arm? Yeah. What does that say? That says Ropel, R-O-P-E-L-L. -L. Who's that? That is uh, my uh, mom's maiden name. That is uh, um, the family that I come from, my mom's side. We've been in uh, Nova Scotia for about 300 years, and uh, and mom was six of eight kids, and um, th that name will not last a, uh, much longer. And so it was... Uh, it was my sort of tribute to to my granddad and to my mom and uh, your very, granddad because he uh, Robert Ropel was uh, was a hero. He he um, he was a very very uh, mild mannered uh, man, God fearing man who also uh, was a career gunner. He was an artillery man in the uh, Royal Canadian Armed Forces for uh, yeah 30, 40 years. Left Canada in thirty nine to fight the Germans made it back alive, and then as soon as he got home, re-enlisted to fight the Japanese, um, was in the uh, first UN peacekeeping mission in Cyprus, uh, responsible for cataloging a great deal of the artifacts of the Canadian War Museum. I'm I, um, very, very proud of the family I, I come from, especially my mom's side. Mm -hmm. And uh, The reason I asked you all this is because, and you tell me if I'm overreaching here, it seems to me you have a lot of reasons to feel very kindly towards Canada. I do. Not the least of which is where you're from, yeah. who your people are, That's it. what the subject matter of your movie is, yeah. the fact that it, it's so uniquely Canadian, Thanks. the Americans probably couldn't figure out how to make that kind of movie down there anyway. I don't think so. So I'm wondering if that's all part of the stew that leads you to conclude that 100%. Okay. I, 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 you know, it's, I don't mean to compare filmmaking um, uh, to soldiering, uh, because uh, <laughs> one one allows us the right to vote, one entertains us. So, um, but but like this is my, you know, it's it's a lump in my throat that I never went to the Royal Military College in Kingston. Um, it was never in cadets, never did any of that stuff. Unlike I, everybody else in the family, most of my mom's family, yeah, I always mm -hmm. felt like I didn't pull my weight in that respect, and so. But you're putting us on the map in a different way. Uh, so I'm trying to do. Good. I want to ask you a bit of a, uh, I know this is a hockey movie, but mm -hmm. let's, let's do a baseball metaphor here. Let's Here's a bit it. of a high tight fastball, you ready? <laughs> you hear this all the time. Yeah. English Canadian movies mm -hmm. uh, punch below their weight. Yeah. Do you think that's true? Um, I, I think a lot of the times, yeah. I think a lot of the time it is, yeah. I think, the, and that's down to a few things. Um, but uh, the, the most important thing is that I think um, in English Canada for too long, we have endeavored to make one kind of movie for one audience. What's that kind of movie? 
Um, I'd say we've made movies for film students um, <laughs> and uh, and film critics and um, as opposed to Canadians. <laughs> you know, that's that's kind of what I like to say is like we we didn't. We don't make goon for Montreal and Toronto and Vancouver. We make goon for Calgary and Halifax and Winnipeg and Hamilton and Barrie, you know. And and I think that it 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 can't be overstated the the cultural repercussions of not being able to see yourself reflected in your own cinema, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, that we 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 are we are English Canada is um, yeah. There there we're we're definitely lacking in that and I think that until the average guy in Calgary sees and hears himself and his friends and his family in the cinema and a hundred feet uh, a hundred feet high and looking as slick and sexy as the Americans next door look until that happens we will always be uh, punching below our weight and that's down to what I call the Avro Arrow effect, which is um, throughout our history, we have been uh, kneecapped um, uh, as a people uh, by a minority of people here who have stood to benefit from the status quo maintaining. And that's a reference to what? So the Avro Arrow, you know, um, is, I remember my granddad sitting me down at the kitchen table when I was four years old, and and he was getting choked up telling me the story of like, you know. Uh, for those who don't know, the, the greatest fighter plane that um, never flew was the Avro Arrow. Uh, when, uh, Built 45 minutes from the studio. That's exactly right, yeah. Um, you know, so, so people forget that you know, when NORAD was founded in the Cold War, um, you know, war was Soviets against the Americans, but we were the ones in between. Mm-hmm. So we were the ones that were going to have to deal with them first if anything ever happened. And so the Canadian Air Force went around to all these different big American aerospace manufacturers and had this unbuildable uh, criteria for a plane. It had to be faster than any other plane on Earth, had to fly longer distance, higher altitude, and bigger payload. And they all said, you have to pick one. You can't have all of these. And then Avro said, no, we think we can do it. And they did. And they did. Okay, but they, the Diefenbaker government cancels it, and the metaphor you're trying to... And then Black Monday, they don't just cancel it, they destroy the ones that they've created. Yeah. And my point yeah. is, is that this has happened in many facets of Canadian industry and culture, uh, throughout history where a few people here um, have stood to benefit uh, from from keeping us uh, sort of hindered. And so who, okay, I'm, you, you've got me, uh, my curiosity peaked here. Who's invested in the status quo and, and I would who think, isn't? I think there are uh, broadcasters and distributors uh, who are uh, um, uh, profiting from the status quo. Uh, there are people whose entire sort of business model is released, 90% of it is releasing uh, foreign films that come with their own posters, trailers, ad campaigns. So when it comes to the 10% of local homegrown stuff that they actually have to build a poster and a trailer and an ad campaign for, they've already assumed they're taking a bath on it. So do you think that they try <laughs> you know their that, heart's not in it and they're not hungry and they and and there's no sort of uh, skin in the game and what do we do about that jay um it takes it takes a few um you know a, 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 anything of merit uh any change of merit uh takes a few people living a slightly less conveniently than than they would otherwise and so what that takes is people that have opportunities, bona fide, sincere opportunities to create elsewhere, electing to create here. And of, of you know, and listen, people don't have to like our movie. People want to hate on our movie, they can. But what they have to do is, is um, we beat us, beat us to it. Come at us more ambitious. Make a bigger, better, uh, uh, more successful movie than we have. Reach Canadian audiences better than we have. You know, we 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 we've we've dropped that. We've set the gauntlet. We want people to come like that. That's what. That's the whole point of all of this. You don't have to like Goon too, but if if you dislike it, beat us then. Do a bigger movie. Reach more people. You know, more average Canadian film goers. Like that. That, that we're talking. This is something so incredibly vital. You take it for granted. You don't realize what it's like 
you know, people don't, I don't think they quite realize what it's like to go to a movie theater your entire life and never see a movie that takes place in your country. And when it does take place in your country, your country is usually a stand-in for a big American city. Yes, it is. That's how, much, how much do you hate seeing that? I really, it's, yeah. it's, it, it bums the hell out of me when movies are, you know, for all intents and purposes are Canadian. They sound mm -hmm. Canadian, look Canadian, are made by Canadians, clearly and, and paid for by Canadians. And then there, someone takes their wallet out and there's American money in the wallet for some bloody right. reason, yeah. you know. Um, so yeah, I, I, I dream of a time uh, where not, it's not just about combating the brain drain, that's one part of it. It's also about like making this the place that people come from elsewhere to want to create. Hmm. How much the first Goon movie cost to make? Uh, uh, it depends who you ask. Uh, uh, I think it was about, it was like, all, all told us around uh, 10, 10 million Canadian. How much you make? Uh, that's, uh, that, 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 that's, that, that I'm not allowed to talk about. Read that's proprietary information? Yes, it is. Y you made it back, I presume. Well, I think so, yeah. W in spades? Yeah, we, we did pretty good, I think. Well, yeah. that's my point. I mean, yeah. you've demonstrated that you can make not only you can. fun movies, and, but profitable movies. Well, that's the thing, and, and Trailer Park Boys has, has shown this above and beyond. Now, they never, there was nothing ever aspirational about that show. Like, they, you, you never, there was not this sort of, when people, so go back to the example I just used, when people put American money in a wallet, that's this servile hope that maybe one day we might increase our chances of being on the shelves at Blockbuster, mm -hmm. right? And that keeps us down. Mm. Trailer Park Boys didn't give a shit about any of that. They just made their show. And people loved it. We fell in love with it. And, they, and we kept falling in love with it. We fell in love with it so much that Ireland heard about it, and Australia heard about it, and America heard about it, and the UK heard about it. And, and now, and they do, they, their tours are sold out whenever they do their live shows across the states. Like, we, we can make stuff, that we've done it in music, we've done it in sports. It's, it's, it's like this weird thing where in, in cinema, we refuse to see ourselves as a big deal audience. You mentioned sports. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna steal myself for this part of the discussion, okay, <laughs> <Yeah>. Jay? <laughs> Okay, I guess we got to do this. Can we please see uh, this commercial for a certain <laughs> hockey team that I believe plays in Montreal? I've heard something about them. I don't know very much about them, but oh, I understand God. they've won a few Stanley Cups along the way. Roll it, please. Thanks for seven. Hi, Max Pacioretty. I've got a strawberry banana smoothie for you, loaded with potassium. <laughs> Great first thing after a workout. Is chocolate milk actually good after a workout? How often do you work out? You have nice muscles. <laughs> <laughs> How much fun was that? That's the best. Yeah, isn't that That's terrific? That's the best. That's a pretty fun two days of shooting. You're a Montrealer originally. Yes, sir. But you live in Toronto now, I do now, Jay. yeah. Yeah. So, can we talk about this odd affection you still have for your former hometown hockey team? <laughs> <laughs> and is there anything we can do about this? Um, I mean, if, if, if the Leafs can somehow win 12 Stanley Cups in my lifetime and catch up to us, You're maybe. You're a cool <laughs> son of a... <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> 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 no, absolutely not. No, I, um, I have a great affinity for Toronto. I really do. I think it's an awesome town. A lot of my best friends in the world live here. I'll be here for a very, very long time. Um, I will never root for a single Toronto sports team. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I uh, I totally respect that. That's the thing. I, totally I would, respect I, that. you know, I I wouldn't. You wouldn't have it any other way. No, no. You wouldn't want a bandwagon. You wouldn't. I can't respect uh, a Leafs fan that becomes a Habs fan, nor could a Leafs fan respect a Habs fan that becomes a Leafs fan. It's impossible. It's impossible. And yet, if you think about it, some of the best players and or executives have played for both teams. I know, I know. Isn't that it's, shocking? Like it's, from Frank Mahovlich to Ken Drummond. Yeah, no kidding. No, that's, I mean, the, that's our country. Red and blue on Saturday night is our country. Very fun. So, I mean, you've been to Montreal Canadiens hockey games in Toronto. Yes. What is that experience like walking into the Air Canada Center yeah. with a Hab shirt on? Oh, it's fine because there's like 50% of the stadium's red. <laughs> that is true. That is <laughs> so unfortunate the, and so that's true. That's the thing. It is like people, for, for a few reasons, there's like two things. Habs are, it goes back to the original six thing when you had to pick one of two teams. So the Habs are, well, there's like Habs fans across the country. Plus, there's two big Anglo diasporas that happened in Quebec that sent a great deal of Habs fans into the 416. So, mm -hmm. so we, we're fairly well represented in most games mm -hmm. I've gone to. Gotcha. Let's just finish up on this. 
your favorite Canadian film of all time? Oh, that's an awesome question. I would say um, it'd be uh, uh, Videodrome would be up there. Cronenberg? Yeah, uh, Cronenberg is like, I, I worship at the altar of Cronenberg. Mm -hmm. I think like he's, um, yeah, he, he, he is the first artist that I heard when I was a kid told me that, uh, not personally in interviews, I mean, but he was the first artist I'd seen in interviews that was from here who said you could do it here. Hmm. You know, everyone else had kind of bailed, and and uh, and he was the first one I noticed that didn't. So, so Videodrome is uh, incredibly important to me. I would say, um, I would say there's a, there's a movie called uh, uh, Junior, which is a, a movie about uh, it's a documentary about uh, one year in the uh, QMJHL, and it just follows a bunch of junior hockey players in uh, um, in rural Quebec, and it is just like nothing else. Um, and you don't see a single minute of hockey in that game. It's just the kids and what they're dealing with here and from their parents and their coaches and getting contradictory advice and all this different stuff. Um, and then, uh, God damn. Um, that's a, no, because there's there's a whole oh, bunch. That's two. That's good. There's two. And then and then I'll say Goon Last of the Enforcers. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Plug the new one. Plug the new that's one. It. I can't tell you how disappointed I am in this interview. <laughs> because your 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 reputation for profanity precedes you, and, and I, I, we heard one minor league swear word and one sort of, you know, borderline religious profanity. I put on and that's my good shirt. I'm, I'm I'm in I'm in TVO mode, man. I don't I don't want I want best to behavior. That's it, exactly right. Got it, Jay. We wish you great luck with thank the new movie, much. and we thank you so much for coming thank in. Thank you TVO for having tonight. me. It was no, lovely no, to be here. Pleasure. Thank you. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.